attack! That was footage from the parody DD Fist of the North Star 2 Strawberry Flavor. So, number one, Fist of the North Star, modern stuff. What? what? That's, That's not, not a, a character. character! Shh! Okay, so we all know about Fist of the North Star, right? Well, there's still no news of any reboot, but for this top 5 list, I wanted to share with you some modern examples of Fist of the North Star you might have missed. For example, did you know that Tetsuo Hara made illustrations of Ryo Saiba and Guts? Well, now you do! Wait, where's Guts and Ryo Saiba? I don't see them anywhere. All I see is Ken. There's also this baseball one and its depiction of Goku, but once again, where's Goku? All I see is Kenshiro cosplaying, and I'm sure you know about this one being Hirohiko Araki's fabulous version of Kenshiro and his brief cameo in Jojo Part 6 Stone Ocean. Anyways, back to Strawberry Flavor. This is a sequel to the parody from 2013, however, this one kinda sucks. Except for the two minute shorts at the end of every episode, which features an art style resembling the original manga. Despite looking incredibly serious, these shorts are parodies from the manga Strawberry Flavor, which stars the villain, Selder. Somehow, this parody is incredibly successful in Japan, to the point where the original voice actor from the 1984 anime, Banjo Ginga, returns to voice the character. Jojo fans may recognize his voice from the 2014 portrayal of Darby the Gambler. Fun fact, in the 1993 OVA, Darby was voiced by Kenji Utsumi, who played Raoul, Kenshiro's main villain. So there's a total of 12 shorts, but I wish there was more, or longer than 2 minutes, but here's something else. There's a very rare 2 minute video which served as promotion for this anime and for the Rugby 2019 World Cup, which was released in 2015. I don't know my Olympics, but isn't that a little early? This short YouTube video is officially titled as Ultimate Rugby Battle, which features Fist of the North Star characters playing rugby. Unfortunately, the only footage I can find online has a shaky cam effect, and the version I downloaded years ago might not be the best quality. I think it was Comic Xenon that originally uploaded, but I have no idea why this video is removed or placed in private. And to end this video are some movies and OVAs I wish were licensed, being Legends of the True Savior. Not to be confused with Legends of the Dark King, which is a spin-off starring Raoul, but these movies do follow a similar continuity to that series, hence the characters Soga and Reina. Legends of the True Savior consists of three movies and two OVAs which adapt pieces of the original story but the characters are redrawn in Tetsuo's Hara's 2000s art style, which is also featured in the manga Fits of the Blue Sky. Most of the content is focused on the Souther arc till Kenshiro's final battle with Raoul, but the OVAs focus on other events such as the Hokuto Brothers training and original story for Toki. There's actually a lot of new content and characters added to the Hokuto lore, which tends to spice things up so that way we're not getting the exact same story again. But my favorite one of these features is Kenshiro Zero, which takes place right after Kenshiro losing to Shin, and what occurred to him during that one year. I would almost recommend anyone to watch this movie as a prequel to the anime, but it's structured oddly. These features are supposed to be watched in chronological order, but even then there's some mix-up in the middle, and Kenshiro Zero is meant to be the last one of the features. The first few minutes takes place after Ken's final battle with Raoul, which occurred in the previous movie, and then Kenshiro proceeds to tell the story of his first major battle. It really helps to see the character in a new light, even with its obvious symbolism, but I can bear it. This tale is about Kenshiro's naive nature being questioned and how he accepts the idea of killing, which begins his path as a master of Hokuto Shinken. I'm quite upset the Legends of the True Savior still haven't been licensed, for I would hope these could serve as gateways for new fans, and maybe even encouraging them to watch the original 1984 anime or read its manga. Sure, the series is still popular in Japan and Italy, but in America, we could really use some more exposure. Yes, we do have the original anime, and I am grateful, but we don't have the manga. We don't have a modern anime to grab the attention of newcomers and the old loyal fanbase. In Japan, new editions of the manga have been released, with new covers, color pages, and some new material, much like the Jojo Neon volumes we're receiving now. This is such a wasted opportunity to not attempt to market the series in the West. Yeah, we had two failed manga attempts, but given how people gravitate towards reboots and currently crave a long battle shonen, now it's the time for Fist of the North Star to make its return. Baki the Grappler is coming back and people are excited. Tiger Mask Double has also gotten some attention. While Jojo is very different from Hokuto no Ken, I think there's still plenty of similarities to attract more fans. So until a reboot happens, I hope one day Legends of the True Savior to be picked up. I don't want to see the Death Omen star shining on the popularity of this series, and I don't want to see another parody. 
I want to see Hope. Am I gonna have to wait till its 35th anniversary in 2018? Or its 40th anniversary in 2023 for a possibility of a reboot? I don't care how long I have to wait, but I would wish for some good news to happen very soon.